Jerry Reinsdorf tries his hand at comedy while Rick Hahn is stuck delivering a message that is destined to fail. The winter meetings wrapped up and White Sox fans are left confused and frustrated. Do you believe Rick Hahn's sincerity? Should we all just sit back and practice patience? For an organization that was primed to make some serious noise in the American League for multiple years, they may very well be preaching to deaf ears. You are Locked On White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Locked On White Sox. Thank you for making Locked On White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just search Locked On White Sox. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Uh, Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan, recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTV. Really appreciate you letting me steal some of your time to talk off-season White Sox. Lockdown White Sox is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. What did we learn from the winter meetings? Uh, Rick Hahn has an almost undeliverable message. Could Joey Gallo be the answer to our outfield of prayers? And Jerry Reinsdorf is a comedian. Wow, the winter meetings have wrapped up. And in the past week, uh, the Chicago White Sox took a reliever in the Rule 5 draft. I had discussions about outfielder Victor Reyes. Found out they will pick 15th in the 2023 MLB draft. And the owner told jokes at an award ceremony while the general manager asked fans to trust him again. That about just wraps it up. Uh, however, there's a rumor uh, that the White Sox will make a big splash and sign Joey Gallo to play the outfield in 2023. Uh, let's talk about Jerry Reinsdorf, the comedian, the clown. Uh, this from James Fegan's article in The Athletic on Thursday. On Wednesday morning, December 7th, the White Sox won the 2022 Sea League Award for Philanthropic Excellence from the Major League Baseball in recognition of the Amateur City Elite, the ACE program, which for 16 years has provided educational and baseball resources for underserved kids in Chicago. Uh, Jerry Reinsdorf was on hand and actually made public comments. This is really the best thing that we do, said team chairman Jerry Reinsdorf. There's 250 kids who went to college that probably would not have gone to college. It's great, but it's one of many programs. Really, I'm sincere when I say the best thing you can do when you own a sports franchise is do things in the community. It's so much more important than winning a baseball game, which is good because we don't win that many. Fegan wrote, Reinsdorf does not typically comment publicly on the team, and this interview was granted in a similar vein, aside from the zinger, the joke, and it was very much delivered and received as a joke, works best when it's interpreted as Reinsdorf being willing to make light of something that bothers him very deeply in the context of something that's objectively more significant than winning and losing baseball games. Uh, there is no question that the White Sox do some great work uh, in the community. The ACE program has been a success, and White Sox charities and volunteer corps uh, do wonderful, meaningful work. However, Jerry Reinsdorf making a joke about his team, the team he funds, not winning many games during a week that saw the White Sox spend zero money to get better during their supposed competitive window is completely tone deaf. 
Read the room, Reinsdorf. Why would you make a joke like that as fans are ready to storm the castle? Jerry Reinsdorf is laughing it up, and really the joke is on us. He is not serious in any sense of the word when it comes to giving the White Sox a serious chance to compete. Uh, I don't believe he cares about winning championships. I think he does care that the White Sox are financially successful, which they continue to be. Uh, Reinsdorf will never write blank checks the way San Diego, Houston, Philadelphia, or the New York Mets do. Uh, This is why there is no Sox Fest this this year. The White Sox organization does not want to answer to their customers. Not that Jerry would ever show up in the first place. It's absolutely pathetic that this organization asks its fans to trust them, trust that they have a plan again. The coaching staff has changed, but of course, nothing will ever change until the front office is reimagined and ownership changes. Uh, Rick Hahn and Kenny Williams are going nowhere. They have jobs because their boss has low expectations. Their boss, Jerry Reinsdorf, is not serious about making the Chicago White Sox a successful franchise. He is serious about if the White Sox are profitable. Rick Hahn is the messenger in this whole train wreck. Uh, His bedside manners are, are cold and played out. He has to deliver a message that right now is falling on deaf ears. Uh, Here's Han coming down from his castle, trying to calm the fans that are sick and tired of the White Sox crying poor. I 100% empathize with it, General Manager Rick Hahn said of fan discontent with the team's lack of action. At the end of the day, there's no added benefit to acquiring a player now. Doing a bad deal on December 6th is a lot worse than doing a good deal on January 6th. There's excitement. We feel it. We all come out here. Your staff is out here. You're talking. There's a bit of fever pitch and energy, a focus on the game. We certainly would love to replicate some of the previous winter meetings we had where we had multiple trades or free agent signings. In the end, we're not going to force it. Do you believe anything this man says anymore? Uh, Han goes on further talking about earning back the fans' trust. I think that's 100% true, Han said, but I would then take it a step farther. Uh, Any acquisition we make, even if it does create a level of excitement, we're still going to have to earn back that trust. We're still going to have to earn that faith. And that's only going to happen once we're on the field and we're showing what this team is about and what they're capable of doing. And in the end, winning ball games. We have won winter meetings before. We have won off seasons before. In the end, it doesn't matter unless the productivity is there on the field. Once the season starts, it might create for a few less negative emails or subtweets uh, to you guys when you're announcing my quotes or whatever, if we had more activity. Uh, But in the end, what matters is winning ball games when the season starts. Uh, We're not going to force anything now to perhaps have a short-term benefit that doesn't carry over through the season and ideally into October. But I get it. I get it. Look, I don't believe a word Rick Hahn says. Uh, for me, he's lost the benefit of the doubt. Honestly, uh, it's a matter of the Chicago White Sox being successful despite the limitations of ownership and the ineptitude of Rick Hahn. The question really is, did Rick Hahn ever believe Jerry Reinsdorf would spend freely when the time was right to finish off the rebuild? and leave no doubt about whether or not the White Sox would be a force in the American League, nobody will maybe ever know. The Sox can still be a success, but are they being set up for it? There are a lot of names uh, still out there despite the uh, activity by other teams this week. I'm going to tell you what to expect from the White Sox. Uh, More on that in a moment. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Uh, Hey, let's pause because I'm talking about Built Bar's new reimagined flavors, a cookie dough topper, coconut brownie bar, a coconut brownie topper, 
a white chocolate peppermint granola. It's Bilt's take on the granola bar, so it's more filling and still insanely tasty. And candy cane brownie puff. Uh, Bilt puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. Uh, first off, for anyone who hasn't tried Built Bars before, they're literally the best tasting protein bars ever built. Uh, they're revolutionizing nutrition, as we know, with it being 100% real chocolate, 17 grams of protein, and shockingly low sugar and calories, just 130 calories. Uh, just sink your teeth into that first bite, and it'll change your life forever. Uh, you're probably wondering which new flavors are my favorite and unanswerable question to say the least. They're all unbelievable and they're all different. So you can order a mixed box and try all five flavors for yourself. Built, you got to try this. Get 15% off your order right now by using the code LOCKEDON15 at built.com. So there were some uh, rumors uh, about Joey Gallo. Uh, Sox trying to answer the outfield question mark for uh, yet another offseason. Uh, White Sox did not throw money at Cody Bellinger. They let the Cubs do that, which I'm fine with. Uh, White Sox do need to upgrade uh, in the outfield, possibly left field to be specific. Uh, and we know they're not going to pursue Brandon Nimmo. Uh, but what about Andrew Benatendi? Adam Duvall, maybe Michael Conforto, even though he's more of a right fielder. Uh, the big rumor going around is that the White Sox may sign free agent Joey Gallo. Uh, Gallo is 29 years old. He spent time with the Yankees and Dodgers in 2022. Uh, Gallo played in 126 games, had 410 plate appearances. He slashed 160, 280. 357 had 19 home runs, uh, which would have been a White Sox team high, and 47 RBIs during his time in New York and LA. Uh, Gallo was an all star and gold glove winner for the Rangers uh, and Yankees. He hit 38 home runs, but led all of Major League Baseball with 213 strikeouts a few years ago. Uh, Gallo is a Left-handed bat, which I'm pretty sure is the major draw for the White Sox. Uh, I also think he, much like Michael Conforto, would be a project, and that's what the White Sox love, right? Uh, they can probably get him for cheap and try to resurrect his numbers. Uh, here are some really quick, basic career numbers for Joey Gallo. In eight years, uh, his slash line, 199, 325, 469. He has a career OPS of 794. So, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Joey Gallo comes to the White Sox in the next few days, a few weeks, maybe. Uh, it's nowhere near the big splash we would have wanted. It's not an aggressive move to get better, but it is a move. It's a lefty bat. Uh, he's a proven outfielder, strikes out a bunch. However, maybe, just maybe, he will benefit from a change of scenery and the magic of Jose Castro and Chris Johnson. Again, it's all about hope. Uh, I have a feeling the White Sox will go with an internal option at second base come opening day rather than spend money or even trade to address that issue. Uh, if they did want to think about signing a veteran, a proven second baseman, there's not much left. Uh, you got Gene Segura, Adam Frazier. You can bring back Josh Harrison and then absolutely a whole lot of nothing. Uh, Cesar Hernandez. I forgot about him, uh, but. Come on, let's be serious. Uh, the White Sox as an organization are trying to sell false goods, perhaps. I'm going to tell you what we learned or already knew from the events in San Diego this past week. More on that in a moment. So what did we find out this past week? I mean, Rick Hahn told us how this was going to go back in early November, but I think most of us just couldn't fathom the White Sox sitting back and doing nothing again, not with all the needs they needed to address again. Uh, we heard what Rick Hahn said, but just did not want to believe him. It, it, for me, it's really tough to take the Chicago White Sox serious. Uh, I'm convinced that the laugh, the last laugh, you know, is on us, the fans. We have watched so many 
other MLB teams go all in, not just this past week, but for multiple off seasons. You know, we're stuck with hope and that a new culture under the guidance of Pedro Grifol and his coaching staff will get something out of these players that the previous regime could not. The White Sox seem like they will be essentially running it back in 2023. It's not anywhere near what we wanted after the season we just witnessed. I'm angry. You're angry. It feels like we've been lied to. But deep down, we kind of knew this was going to happen. The offseason is not over, but the serious expectations of building a franchise that sees multiple championships is all but dead. Folks, really appreciate you making time for this uh, podcast, making it part of your daily routine. You can find the Locked On White Sox podcast absolutely everywhere you find your podcast. Uh, we are on Twitter at Locked On Sox. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTB. And don't forget about our YouTube channel. Uh, just search Locked On White Sox to subscribe. Thank you for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up on the next episode, I will continue to take a look at off-season scenarios for the Chicago White Sox as the Pedro Grafol era moves full steam ahead. Really appreciate you making time for the Lockdown White Sox podcast. I'm Nick Morowski. Until next time, go Sox.